Today we are going to be interpreting the remainder of a division problem and deciding if we should ignore that remainder or turn it into a fraction. So problem number one, Mrs. J has 30 yards of masking tape. So I'm gonna underline that because that's important. There are seven teams and each team needs as much tape as possible to build the tallest tower. Anna says that each team should get four yards of tape because 30 divided by seven equals four remainder two. Do you agree that the remainder should be ignored? So I am going to go ahead and do that math problem here to kind of show you. So we have 30 yards of tape divided by seven people or seven teams. 7 can go into 30 four times. 4 times 7 is 28. When I subtract, I have 2 left over. So this is where Anna gets 4 remainder 2. And so she's just saying, you know, if we ignore that 2, each team could get 4 yards. But we could take those 2 yards that are left over and split them up so that the teams could get as much tape as possible. So I have two yards left over, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw them. So here's yard one, here's yard two. And so kind of like we've practiced in previous lessons here, I need to split up these two yards. And now remember, I have seven teams. So I'm gonna go ahead and split up each yard into sevenths so that each team could get a piece of each yard. So if I want to split it up into seven, I'm going to draw six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, I like to count to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and label them. This is one seventh one seventh, remember one piece out of seven total, one out of seven total. So each team is going to get one seventh from each extra yard of tape. So when I'm done labeling one seventh here, so team number one is going to take this one seventh and they're gonna take this one seventh. So when I add those together, they are going to get an extra two sevenths of a, of a yard of tape. Okay? So now when I go to look at my final answer, I'm going to say that each team can get four yards, because that is my answer, and then a little bit extra because we split up that remainder, two sevenths. So four and two sevens. So we're gonna get that full four, and then I split up the last. This is yard number one and yard number two. I split that those two yards up into sevens. So now I have four and two sevens of a yard. Okay. So we're just gonna quickly talk about when should we report a remainder. So when we are sharing or cutting up food, so if you have to cut up you know, pieces of pizza or loaves of bread, are you gonna be able to cut those into pieces, further into pieces? I'm gonna say yes. So I can take a piece of pizza and cut it up into small pieces or graham crackers. Dividing pounds of clay or buckets of sand. So if you have a couple pounds left over, can you cut those up even further? Even buckets of sand, I'm gonna say Yes, you can. Can you divide people, animals, phones, or pencils into groups? So if I have a remainder of two phones, can I chop up the phones into fourths? Can I chop up the animal or their pencils as an example of people? No, I cannot. I cannot cut those into further pieces. So I cannot report those as a remainder. I'm going to ignore either round up or round down that remainder. Could I report a remainder when I'm converting measurements? So if I'm taking inches to feet and I have 
you know, two left over, could I make them into smaller pieces? Yes, you can. So as you are doing these problems, just keep this in mind. Think about, okay, can I actually take that remainder and cut it up into further smaller pieces to split it up even more? And so in these situations, you have some that you can and definitely some that you cannot. So I'm gonna make sure you cannot split those up into smaller pieces. Okay, moving on to question number two. Ben just adopted a dog. The bag of food should last 14 days. So again, I'm gonna underline that, it's important. The bag has 21 cups of food. If Ben feeds his dog the same amount each day, how many cups of food should he feed his dog? Okay, so I'm thinking about what is this math problem that I'm doing here? So I have 14 days and 21 cups of food. So I always kind of ask myself, what is the object that I have? I have 21 cups of food. And what am I dividing it by? I am dividing it by 14 days. So here is my math problem that I'm going to do. 21 divided by 14. So let's put it in a way that we can do long division. So I have 21 divided by 14. Okay, now thinking how many groups of 14s can go into 21, and I'm going to put only one. One times 14 is 14. And now I'm gonna do my subtraction here. 21 minus 14 and that's gonna equal seven. So if I were writing my answer here, I would say that my answer is one remainder seven. But what we're gonna focus on in this video is taking that remainder and turning it into a fraction. So what I really have is, it can go in one time, I have seven left over, and what am I dividing by? I'm dividing by 14. So I have seven left over divided by 14. So this is how you are gonna report your remainder every time you do a problem now. I look at my remainder and I put that as my numerator, which is my top number, seven, and it's being divided by my divisor, which is 14. So instead of drawing my picture to section it all out, I can now use this method to find my answer. So that's cups of food. Okay, now going on to problem number three. There are 35, again, I'm gonna underline important, mini bags of pretzels for 20 students. The students agree to split the remaining bags. How many bags will each student get? So again, I'm writing down my problem and I'm thinking, okay, how many of an object do I have? I have 30 five bags of food. And what am I splitting it up between? What am I dividing it by? 20 students. So here's my math problem. 35 divided by 20. So I'm going to go ahead and do that problem here. 35 divided by 20. And again, 20 goes into 35 one time. 1 times 20. Do some subtraction here. I have 5, 3 minus 2 is 1, I have 15 left over. So now I'm going to go ahead to write my answer here. I have a full 1 as my answer. I have 15 left over. And what was I dividing by? I was dividing by 20. So my answer is 1 and 15 twentieths. I have 15 left over divided by 20 people. So that's going to be my answer. So I have a few problems here that we're going to practice, okay, just turning them, not a, um, a story problem, but still turning them into a mixed number here. So ready? 21 divided by 14, and here we go. One, 14 goes into 21, one time, one times 14, I'm going to subtract. When I subtract, I have 7 left over. So when I rewrite my problem, I have my full one, my remainder seven, and what was I dividing by? 14. All right, 
coming over here. 35 divided by 20. So I'm going to write 35. Say it out loud when you write it down. Divided by 20. 20 goes into 35 one full time. I'm going to subtract here. I have 15 left over. So I would write one remainder 15, but remember we are turning that into a mixed number. So my full answer, I have one, then I have 15 left over, and what was I dividing by? I was dividing by 20. So one and 15 twentieths. All right, one last one before our lesson practice. I have 54 divided by 12. So how many times can 12 go into 54? And I'm going to put 4. 4 times 12 equals 48. When I subtract, I have 6 left over. So I would write remainder 6, but remember we're turning that into our mixed number. So I have a full 4. I have 6 left over. What was I dividing by? 12. So 4 and 6 twelfths. All right, and here are your th three problems for your lesson practice that I want you to, as you do the division problems, write your remainder and then turn it into a fraction.